How optimistic are you about the health of the sport going into the new season? Well, there are some challenges without doubt, of course. Why wouldn't Formula One be affected uh, in the same way that every other business is? And, of course, we all are. So Formula One has to really adjust, I think, and get rid of some costs. You, you look at it and it just seems extreme, seems ridiculous actually now looking back at how much money has been spent. It will have a shrinking process on, on Formula One in the same way it has on, on the economy in general. It will survive though because Formula One still remains the pinnacle of, of motorsport with the fastest cars, the um, best technology uh, and it still remains from a marketing point of view one of the best ways to, to get your products out there in the, the public domain on a global scale. I, I'm not sure now is the time that Formula One needs to be concerned although they are taking huge measures in terms of cost cutting so as to make sure that the resources that they have uh, will, they will be able to be employed to make very good cars. So I think Formula One, the history shows that they are very resilient to trends and bucks in the market, uh, financial markets that is, and um, I have no doubt that Formula One will be able to withstand this pressure. I don't think actually the credit crunch is going to make all that much difference to the ordinary viewer because although the teams are going to be spending a lot less money, and rightly so, it's not going to be obvious to the viewers. I'm optimistic about it being one of the best Grand Prix seasons of all time. There's obviously been a lot of talk about rule changes for the start of this season. What impact will they have on the drivers themselves? How will they change the driver's experience? Going into the season, we have slick tyres again, we have energy recovery systems, uh, we have uh, moving aerodynamic devices, um, less efficient cars to try and create overtaking. So it's all geared towards trying to m maintain the speeds and make the actual spectacle for the, the people at the track and obviously the viewers at home to improve that. Whether it achieves it or not, of course, we all have to wait and tune in and see what happens in Melbourne. All the teams are starting off with a clean sheet of paper and any experience they've got of the past, they can forget about because they're all starting from new. So, theoretically, there is no reason why Williams, who haven't been doing as well in recent years, shouldn't do as well as McLaren and Ferrari this year, who have been doing very well. It's very, very exciting and genuinely unpredictable. A lot of changes with the, the way the cars are going to handle, they have to learn how to make the slicks work, the new dry tyres. I think the cars will be really difficult to drive in the wet because you've lost a third of the downforce, let's say, and the wet tyres haven't changed, the dry tyres have, they're going to have much more grip from the dry tyres. So in the rain, I think we're going to see a lot of mistakes. So generally it's going to be a challenging year for the drivers. I mean, is it going to make life more difficult for Lewis Hamilton, effectively? Um, well, Lewis Hamilton, there's no God-given right that he can win this championship again. And historically, I think McLaren, um, under when the rules have all changed, McLaren come out of the box a little bit slower, but much more determined. So over a period of time, I see McLaren being very strong. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, as we know, he has now the mindset that he is a world champion. He knows how to win races. We've already known that for some time. But to win a championship was different. Had he not won the championship, having so been unlucky in 2007, uh, I can't imagine how his mind would be. Uh, but that, of course, didn't happen, thankfully. And uh, we have a situation where there is a British champion. He's the darling of the world in terms of sporting ability, and, and uh, his prowess is fantastic. And I think he's a big favourite. I think Lewis is well equipped with the simulator programmes they have at McLaren, with the, the might and resource of McLaren, and the full support that he has from the team. He's, 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 the stigma's gone now of can he win a world championship? That's put to bed. I think he'll take off, he'll be on a whole new level of confidence. He's the man to beat. You can't look at last year as a, as a, uh, a guide to performance going into the season. It would be a brave person to bet against McLaren, Ferrari, those sorts of teams with the, the, the budgets they have, the resources they have at their disposal, adapting as quickly, if not in a more uh, um, efficient fashion than some of the smaller teams. But we don't know today. We haven't seen all the teams out testing on the same track. Is Lewis Hamilton a uh, world championship, uh, world class driver? Yes, he is. Can he achieve even greater things in his career looking forward? I believe so, because he's now achieved the first you know, tick in the box and he'll be a more relaxed man for it. Who do you see as the 
the, the closest rival, if you like, to Lewis? It depends how some of the cars are working. The Massa is driving beautifully, and I don't see any reason for that to change. Uh, Kubica was doing a great job for BMW, and if the Renault's strong, then I would say uh, Alonso will be there. No one would have given uh, Massa a prayer. For me, he was the big surprise of 2008. We got Raikkonen there. We're all told he's a new reformed man and determined to regain his crown. And of course, then you've got Alonso, who towards the latter end of the season in 2008, he, he, he was a big, big surprise. And if they can get it together at Renault like they did in the Michael Schumacher era, um, then he has to be there. So it all looks to a fantastic season in the future. And there's at least another five reasons why Lewis Hamilton should not win the World Championship this year. Uh, the two Ferrari drivers, uh, Fernando Alonso, who's driving for Renault, the two BMW drivers, Sebastian Vettel, the new boy in the Red Bull, is going to need a lot of watching. Lewis is going to have a lot more competition from the drivers this year, as well as the cars. You'd be brave to rule out uh, Ferrari because through the changing formulas that we've seen over the, the last decade, they've constantly been there as, uh, as world championship constructors. They may not always have won the driver's championship, but they've certainly got a more winning history at that than any other team on the grid at the moment. Um, so, yeah, they're going to be there. Renault with Alonso, Red Bull with Vettel and Weber, uh, BMW with Kubica. You know, the potential there for having a, a classic Grand Prix season is definitely, uh, definitely on the cards.